Hello everybody, Reverend Richard again here with you, uh, ready to share our sermon for Sunday the 5th of April, and that's Palm Sunday, and we're using our Bible reading for Sunday the 5th of April, which is Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11, our Gospel reading. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, living word, we thank you that through the written word we might know you. May we now know you through the spoken word, the God of life who comes to bring us life in fullness as we come to meet with you wherever we are. Bless us, Lord, we pray, and may we know you at this time in our own situations. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Adoring crowds, a hero's welcome, and tributes from every side. So, where did it go wrong for Jesus? Within days of these events, Jesus would be on trial before the country's leadership. He would be found guilty of a crime that he did not commit. He will be flogged. He will be tortured. And he will be executed. Jesus will die. Jesus will die. Not a hero's death. Instead, Jesus will die as a criminal. Just as the events of Palm Sunday are filled with great ceremony, so too will the events of his death on the cross on Good Friday. But these two occasions could be not be more different, both in their expression and in their outcome. Of course, as Christians, we know the end of the story. I don't mean Easter Sunday, but Good Friday. We know that Jesus will die. We know that the cheers of a crowd will turn to jeers as the king of the Jews is led away for the final time in an altogether different direction. We know that the triumphal entry will soon become a tragic exit. But for now, today, we remain at Palm Sunday. Those who accuse the disciples of cult rustling stand aside at the mention of Jesus' name. They understand the power of his celebrity. An exuberant crowd gathers, welcoming Jesus as a coming king. Many even sacrifice their clothing to give him smooth passage. The rest do some impromptu tree surgery to ensure Jesus will receive the welcome that they, for now, believe that he deserves. And so, where did it all go wrong for Jesus? What goes wrong is that the people forget their history, their history. They forget that Jesus' arrival on a donkey has already been foretold by the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Although this would have only made sense in reverse after Easter Sunday, there is a lack of insight. There is a lack of remembering, of remembering their history so that their present is better informed. Surely anyone with wisdom and discernment reading Zechariah in the days of a triumphal entry would have noticed the parallels. But no, the people forget their history. And they forget their history book, the Old Testament, in the process. And so, Jesus' humble entry on a donkey is overlooked by people in search of a king riding into town on a stallion instead, accompanied by hordes of soldiers to bring freedom for the oppressed of Jerusalem. That would be a different kind of triumphal entry, one that, although wanted by the people, didn't match the kind of arrival that God wanted for his son. What we know of as the Christmas story 
Jesus being born as a human baby in everyday and humble surroundings is the precursor, of course, for the story of Easter. But it is a precursor in more ways than one. In these episodes from Jesus' life, we understand who God is and what God is like. God's choices reveal God's character. God's choices reveal God's character. This is the second thing that goes wrong for Jesus. The people forget who they belong to. The people forget the character of God. And they forget their identity as his people. They forget what being the people of God means. If they had remembered, they would have remembered not to judge. They would have remembered that God, not humanity, determines the future of God's people. They would have remembered the importance of compassion. They would have remembered the commandment not to bear false witness. They would have remembered the commandment not to murder. God's people forget that they are God's people. This collective, calculated amnesia come, becomes deep-rooted and quick to take effect. Within days of shouting for Jesus to be crowned, they are shouting for Jesus to be crucified. What is only more shocking than the outcome of this loss of collective memory is the speed at which it occurs. And so, hailed as a coming king, Jesus will soon be nailed to a tree. All that is yet to come, of course, but we know the end of a story from the beginning. And so we know what will happen. We know where it all goes wrong for Jesus. And yet, it is what goes wrong for Jesus that is actually where it all goes right. Without this inexplicable turn of events in one direction, there can be no unfathomable turn of events in another. There can be no resurrection without crucifixion. There can be no life without death. There can be no eternity without the time-bound events of Holy Week. And so this Palm Sunday, as we begin another Holy Week, let us remember our history. Let us remember whose we are. Let us remember that it did all go wrong for Jesus that week. But let us remember that by going wrong, things actually turned out better than we could have imagined, hoped for, designed or indeed deserved by ourselves. This Holy Week, we may find ourselves in one of three groups. The obedient disciples, the cheering crowds of Palm Sunday, or the jeering hordes of Good Friday. Let us choose obedience. Let us choose to celebrate the coming King. And if we do find ourselves tempted to scoff at the sheer absurdity of it all. Let us choose to be humbled, humbled by the sheer reality of Jesus' death for us at Easter. And let us choose the forgiveness and let us choose the welcome that he offers to all who put his, their trust in his power to write the end of a story from the beginning. Amen. Bless you all.